Hello everybody! Today we're going to take a quick look at the latest version of The Little Mermaid, directed by Rob Marshall. I imagine most of you don't need a plot summary for The Little Mermaid, but here goes. The movie stars Halle Bailey as Mermaid Ariel and Jonah Howard King as Human Eric. The sea witch Ursula, played by Melissa McCarthy, agrees to turn Ariel into a human in exchange for her voice. And Human and Mermaid meet and fall in love, but she has to get her man to kiss her before the sun sets on the third day, or she will forfeit her legs and her life to the sea witch. And saying this out loud, this does not sound like a very good deal. This is the movie that had many online reactionary douchebags up in arms, although... Really, that's true of every movie nowadays. Remember when people used to like things? Those were good days. But they mainly hated this movie because, I don't know if you noticed, but the girl playing Ariel is... Black. And this is a problem because... Well, they were never very good at explaining why it's a problem, but it's definitely not because they're racist. Now that I've seen the movie, I can tell you this is the best live-action adaptation Disney has done so far, although that's not really saying a whole lot. That wasn't a high bar to clear. Nevertheless, it is true. It still has some issues, but I assure you Halle Bailey is not one of them. She is good, and god damn that girl can sing. When she sang Part of Your World, who nailed it. They have made some changes from the animated version, and because of those changes, this one is almost an hour longer, which is not as bad as it sounds. The original was actually pretty short. I don't even think it was 90 minutes. And most of that runtime seems to be dedicated to making Eric more than just a prince with good hair. He is an actual character now. He is the prince of a small Caribbean kingdom, which is very big into isolationism, and that does not sit well with him. He would much rather go out and explore the world and trade with other nations and find new ways to help his people. And he and Ariel actually have a lot in common. They're both into exploration, they both have collections of treasures that they picked up over the years, they both have single parents, so they actually have a connection beyond just the physical attraction. Good change. And in this version, Ursula is King Triton's estranged sister. Uh... Not really sure where the tentacles came from, unless Triton is her brother from another mother. And McCarthy is clearly having the time of her life. I wasn't sure if she would be the right person for this role, but she impressed me. They did add a few new songs in this version. Eric gets a song, uh, it wasn't particularly memorable, but it was fine. Ariel gets a new song, although it happens after she loses her voice, so she's somehow singing without actually singing. It's a little weird. And Scuttle and Sebastian have a hip-hop song, and... That was a mistake. I normally like Lin-Manuel Miranda's work, but this was... This was not good. No. No, it wasn't. I thought Rob Marshall did a pretty good job overall, and it's about damn time Disney hired a director who actually has some experience making musicals. He did Chicago, Into the Woods, Mary Poppins Returns, and... It is amazing what a difference it makes when you have someone behind the camera who knows what the hell they're doing. Why did it take this long? That said, I do have some issues. There are some scenes in this movie, both above and under the sea, that are absolutely gorgeous to look at. The underwater environments can be very bright and colorful, especially during Under the Sea. There is a dance number that takes place on the Caribbean island that I thought was very well done. The underwater hair looks good, although I assume they're just using the same program they use for Aquaman. But there are other scenes in the movie that are just too damn dark. It is possible to film either at night or underwater and still let the audience see everything that's going on. And I swear there was a time when Hollywood understood how to do this. But somehow we've regressed. I really was not impressed with giant Ursula at the end of the movie. You can barely see her at all. The pessimist in me thinks they did that to make the VFX job easier, which, you know, I get it. It still doesn't look good. And I was not very high on David Diggs as Sebastian. It seemed to me like he was putting more effort into the accent and less effort into actually emoting. He was sadly a poor substitute for Sammy Wright. His singing was fine, though. I mean, we know he can sing. That was never going to be a problem. And Disney's focus in these live-action adaptations on making the animals look as realistic as possible just continues to baffle me. Flounder in particular looks terrible. There is no expression on that face at all. This is him throughout the entire movie. Am I happy now? Am I sad? Am I scared? You don't know. And the first time we see Scuttle in this movie, who is voiced by Aquafina, she dives into the sea, snatches up a fish, and eats it, and she does this right in front of Flounder. Flounder does not react to this at all. Then again, perhaps he does react. 
Can't tell. Everyone under the sea hates humans because they eat fish, but Scuttle they're apparently okay with? What? And why so much focus on realism in a movie about mermaids? It, it's one or the other, people, come on. Some of the music that returns from the original movie is still very well done, like Part of Your World and Poor Unfortunate Souls. But other songs like Under the Sea and Kiss the Girl just do not hit as hard. You know that part in Under the Sea where Sebastian lists off all the instruments that the various fish are playing? Well, he still does that in this version. That line is still in the song, but the fish aren't playing any instruments because realism. Why? It's especially baffling because they actually did rewrite some of the lyrics for Poor Unfortunate Souls and Kiss the Girl, but Under the Sea, nah, keep it as is. And compared to the original, Kiss the Girl just sounds... impotent. Almost every song in this movie is a solo or, at most, a trio. There's no backup vocals at all, and especially with Kiss the Girl, it just sounds weak. And again, it's too damn dark. It looks inferior, it sounds inferior, it's just... It's, it's disappointing. They also added a plot point where Ursula somehow makes Ariel forget that she has to get Eric to kiss her before sunset on the third day, and that just felt unnecessary. And it doesn't make much sense. Even if she doesn't remember that she needs to kiss him, she clearly has the hots for him. Why would she not want to anyway? I kind of get what they were going for. They were trying to say something about consent, which, you know, good message, but this was not the way to do it. Overall, I would say the new version of The Little Mermaid is perfectly fine. It improves on the original in some ways and falls short in others, but overall I think it did enough to justify its existence. I don't know if it's worth full price, but I could justify it as a matinee. And that's all I have to say about The Little Mermaid. Till next time, take care.